Today we celebrate the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As always, you are most welcome and we appreciate your presence and your prayer. We invite everyone to join Voices of Change, a time for listening. It's an online Zoom meeting about racism that's taking place tomorrow evening. Registration is required. See the bulletin or our website for more information. Join us for praise and worship with adoration and reflections from seminarian Brian immediately following the 8 p.m. Mass this evening. In our prayers for this liturgy, we also remember Dorothy Durda. Please stand and take a moment to extend a welcome to those around us, introducing yourselves to anyone you may not know. I invite you to please turn and face the back of church. We'll begin our Mass this day because we have uh, a baptism during Mass today. We'll begin here at uh, the entrance of the church before we process in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear parents and godparents, your family has experienced great joy at the birth of your child and the church shares your happiness. Today, this joy has brought you to the church to give thanks to God for the gift of your child and to celebrate a new birth in the waters of baptism. This community rejoices with you, for today the number of those baptized in Christ will be increased, and we offer you our support in raising your child in the practice of the faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us now prepare ourselves, ourselves to participate in this celebration, listening to God's word, praying for this child and her family, and renewing our commitment to the Lord and to his people. So I ask you, Carl and Katie, what name have you given to your child? Rosemary Therese. And what do you ask of God's church for Rosemary Therese? Eternal life. Beautiful. In asking for this gift that comes through baptism, you also undertake the responsibility of raising her in the faith so that keeping God's commandments, Rosie may love the Lord and her neighbor as Christ taught us. Do you understand this responsibility? We do. Very good. And uh, those uh, godparents and those representing them, are you ready to help the parents of this child in their duty? Yes. Very good. Then, Rose Mary Therese, in the name of the church, the church of God receives you with great joy, and in the name of that church, I sign you with the sign of the cross on your forehead, and I invite you, uh, invite uh, parents and godparents to do the same.
to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up till now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. So 
of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. As we continue to open our hearts to the parables of Jesus and allow them to transform our minds so that we can truly see uh, the invisible reality that we are called to, that we are created for, that we can get these little glimpses in, of heaven, these little, uh, allow these three windows into heaven today to help us to see a little bit of what heaven is like. As we continue to do this, these, these parables today give us um, and new ideas, new insights, especially most importantly that these first two parables show us about the treasure in the field and the pearl of great price, that life is meant to be lived for a specific purpose, and it is worth sacrificing so much of this life in order to have that one thing, to pursue that one thing, as long as what we are going after is the real one thing. As that old phrase goes, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing, right? Uh, first things must come first and second things must come second. This is what we see in that man who finds that treasure in the field and spends everything to buy it, or that merchant who has been searching for that pearl, and when he finally finds it, he sells everything else to have it. I have had it said to me in conversation 
that you know people really are noticing what uh, organizations are doing during this time of COVID-19, how we are responding. Some people responding in fear, some people simply trying to protect themselves, others really um, focused on the concern for others and how they can help others. So whether we respond well or poorly, people are noticing whether it's churches, how churches are responding, how hospitals are reacting how schools are preparing to reopen and you know, how they dealt with you know, the end of uh, the last semester. All of these things give an opportunity to either make a great witness for Jesus or uh, fail in that witness. We as Christians are called to really um, make a choice well during this time especially. And if there's anything that is essential, it is for us to follow the Lord Jesus, to give ourselves completely to Christ. Really, life s summarizes down to simply two choices. We either choose God, or we choose one of the things that isn't God, that eventually will fizzle away. And those two options that ring out into eternity are played out every single day in many simple ways. The hundreds of choices that we make each day as our minds wander, as we jump from one thing to the next, as we perhaps friv frivolously burn up our free time sometimes. All of these choices are opportunities for us to choose God or nothing. Sometimes we may choose God. Other times we may be choosing um, one of those many things that ultimately amounts to nothing. As Jesus himself reminded us, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world if he loses his soul? If God gave you the question that he gave Solomon today, what would you say? If you had the opportunity to choose one thing that you could have, God's saying, ask whatever you want, what would we choose? What would we ask for? Solomon chose an app to ask for the gift of wisdom knowing that he would need that in his role as a leader of the people of God. St. Paul refers to Jesus as that wisdom of God. And this is what we ourselves ultimately should be choosing. We're now entering into perhaps a new period of transition in our society where by wearing masks, you know, in public places, we'll be able to reopen a lot more. Science is sort of really, really leaning towards, you know, as evidence gets more and more clear, that if everyone wear, wears masks, the transmission of the virus really, really, really goes down, along with the other important protocols too. But the wearing of the masks is a very essential part of that. And so, we can hopefully uh, continue to re, um, re-establish a lot of things that have been, you know, restricted for reasons of necessary precaution, but perhaps as we see that maybe that won't be happening as much. And so, although it may be an inconvenience, it may be a sacrifice, this ultimately is a sacrifice that leads to a greater freedom for all of us in a life uh, in public doing more ordinary things. But the question is, as we have more freedom and more opportunity to do those ordinary things in our lives, what will we choose? Are we going to choose one of the many nothings out there? Or will we choose the pearl of great price? Just as people will notice what churches and hospitals and schools and large companies do for their employees, their customers, their clients, etc., so also will your family, will your friends and your neighbors and your co-workers recognize what you choose to do during this time. May it be a good witness to them in a quiet way to say, I choose the treasure hidden in the field. I choose the pearl of great price. I choose the Lord Jesus, the wisdom of God.
We will, go, we will uh, skip over the, peti- the uh, creed today, but we will stand now for the petitions as we bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. The creed will uh, take place during the baptismal rite just after our petitions. For the whole church, that we may continue to pursue God's kingdom and encourage others to seek it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those throughout the world whose search for God's kingdom is overridden by the search for personal safety or survival, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who contribute to God's kingdom by promoting peace, compassion, justice, and integrity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those committed to understanding one another despite racial culture, politics, or barriers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to our current global pandemic and for the healing of bodies and hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those whose names are written in our prayer intention book, prayer chain, all those hospitalized, and those remembered in the listing of the sick, that they may experience healing in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this community who need our support and prayers, and for those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Rosemary Therese, this child who in baptism will receive new birth through the radiant divine mystery of the death and resurrection of Jesus, and join her to the Holy Church, we pray to the Lord. That the Lord may make her a faithful disciple and a witness to the gospel through baptism and confirmation, we pray to the Lord. That she may be led through holiness of life to the joys of the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. That her parents and godparents may be shining examples of faith to this child, we pray to the Lord. That her family may remain always in your love, we pray to the Lord. That for all of us, the grace of baptism may be renewed, we pray to the Lord. We now invoke the saints to intercede for us before we anoint this child for baptism. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Therese of Lisieux, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Avila, pray for us. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, pray for us. Saint Rose of Lima, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. I'll now invite our family forward for the anointing. Almighty, ever-living God, who sent your Son into the world to drive out from us the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, and bring the human race rescued from darkness into the marvelous kingdom of your light, we humbly beseech you to free this child from original sin, to make her the temple of your glory, and to grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in her, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the strength of Christ the Savior protect you. As a sign of this, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. In the same Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now process to the back of church for the baptism.
Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, that the Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on this child by water and the Holy Spirit. O God, who by invisible power accomplished a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive thy, by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, the child you have presented is about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring her up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow in her day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin and profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which children are baptized. So I invite you to respond, I do, to these ancient questions of the faith on behalf of Rosie. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Is it your will, therefore, that Rosemary Therese be received baptism in the faith of the Church which we have professed with you? Then you may bring her to the waters of baptism. Rosemary Teresa, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's a good thing she really likes water, they say. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin and given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and joined you to his people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, so that you may remain as a member of Christ, priest, prophet, and king, unto eternal life. Amen. Rosemary Therese, you have become a new creation.
and have clothed yourself in Christ. See now, in this white garment of yours, may it be a sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring it unstained into eternal life. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that your child, enlightened now by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light and preserving, persevering in the faith, may run to meet the Lord Jesus when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. May the Lord Jesus, who made the deaf hear and the mute speak, grant that you may soon receive his words with your ears and profess the faith with your lips to the glory and praise of God the Father. Amen. Let us now welcome and congratulate this newest member of God's family. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. 
And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese the Little Flower, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Kevin our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have this peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord have mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that tomorrow night we have our second uh, online meeting on racism, on this, the topic of racism. So if you didn't uh, get an email about that from the parish email list, uh, you contact the parish maybe tomorrow morning if you wish to participate. It's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock if you have a computer with internet and a video camera, you should be able to, to participate in that if, uh, I guess if you know how it works, but um, call the office and they can help you to register for that because you have to sign up ahead of time in order to participate in that meeting. I think that's it for big events this week in the parish. Sorry if I missed something, I apologize. Um, but please be seated for a brief announcement now from our Director of Music and Liturgy. Friends of Little Flower, it has been my honor and pleasure to serve as your interim music director this past year. I can't tell you the abundance of blessings and grace God has bestowed on me every week at this parish, from meeting new friends, learning new music, and falling deeper in love with the liturgy and the faith. But this spring, I finally graduated from Notre Dame, and this is my last weekend. Right now, we're in the process of finding my replacement, and I promise we'll get someone that's a better pianist than me, a better singer than me, and definitely keeps a cleaner office than me. It's been a good first year, but it's been a weird year with interesting challenges. We have the singing room in the corner, we had an empty church on Easter, and Father and I even ministered to a funeral for one of the virus's victims. But the most personal effect it's had on me is that I don't get to hear you all sing. From the first Mass I played last August, I knew this parish was a parish of singers, more full of song than many other parishes I've seen. And I hope you don't forget that gift. And I pray that when this is all over, you will return to song with a full heart. I hope that I have been a positive influence on this parish and this people, and know that you have all had a great effect on my life. Thank you. Just for my own part and on behalf of the parish staff, Daniel, we have greatly appreciated having you with us as a member of our team for these uh, past number of months uh, during your, your last year at Notre Dame. And may God continue to be with you and bless you in your future endeavors. We also uh, say farewell to seminarian Brian. Uh, this is his last day with us and we wish him the best in the year ahead of study at seminary. He starts class back up in just two weeks, but also praying especially for him and the other seminarians, the other men who will be ordained deacons just about a year from now. Whether they have masks on or not, they will be ordained deacons. So uh, please keep them in your prayers. I think that's pretty much it. Please stand for the final blessing. I want to invite forward our family for baptism today to receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Bow down for the blessing. The Lord God Almighty, through his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, brings joy to Christian mothers as the hope of eternal life shines forth upon their children. May he graciously bless Kate, the mother of this child, so that as she now gives thanks for the gift of her child, she may always remain united with her in thanksgiving. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. May the Lord God Almighty, the giver of life, both in heaven and on earth, bless Carl, the father of this child, so that together with his wife, they may, by word and example, prove to be the first witnesses of the faith to their child. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. And may the Lord God Almighty, who by water and the Holy Spirit has given us new birth into eternal life, abundantly bless his faithful here present, that always and everywhere they may be active members of his people. And may he bestow his peace upon all who are here, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to you, God.